I think that AJ was just one of these guys where we were all bought in and he was kind of a unique situation in my lifetime since like Lennox Lewis, maybe, but see Lennox Lewis is like kind of like right when the internet was getting going, didn't really know how to use the internet. So I'm not really following the journey. And even though he's like the same age, essentially as Mike Tyson, he always feels like the next generation of fighters because he didn't make it to HBO to like what 2002 or something. It's like, he feels like a different era. Joshua to me has always kind of been a guy who like he looks great he has a gold medal he speaks well how can we keep him in the position to just make a ton of money and i feel like building up his career for me i always say this when he fought joe parker that was like the biggest red flag fight ever because he just couldn't handle a jab it's like joe's jab was really flustering him and frustrating it was like he probably won the fight or it was draw it was like seven five fight if we're being fair and I mean, really, from that point on, he looked like a very vulnerable champion who kind of had a Sugar Ray Leonard like vibe about him in the UK, where it wasn't about his skill set. It was about the morality and the marketing put behind him. If you don't like AJ, you're just straight up a bad person. That was kind of the tenor I got from people in the UK. It's like we genuinely like this guy. He's a great guy. We love the branding, the marketing and all that. But there wasn't a lot of fight specific analysis because he's the big average. He's a fairly good boxer, average boxer, good power for the heavyweight, but not exceptional. Everything checked in the middle. And what I noticed about great heavyweight boxers are they're actually not average. They typically have one exceptional trait. That's the that's the outlier of heavyweight is you have to be exceptional. And I think that Joshua, now we're going somewhere else, is running the risk of being the modern Frank Bruno. If he doesn't find some form of a career renaissance or resurrection. What do you think that is? Like, do you think it's a a trainer switch up? What what do you think that is for him? I mean, I don't know if it's possible at this point. Like, this is like saying, like, you want to be a pro wrestler at 38. You know, sometimes you want things that might not be reasonable. He's got a ton of money. It feels like the way he fought Usyk, he runs his own camp. You know, it doesn't seem like a coach would be like, you know, what's the best game plan for you? Show them that you can box. You're way bigger than them. You're way stronger. Why don't you just trick everybody and try to box with this? Like, so that basically tells me he's running the show. He's paying people. They want to stay on the show. So I think it, it starts with a culture shift. And I think it would honestly depend on him not really doing media. I think he needs to do everything that's the opposite of what he does. But a guy like Usyk, right, who's won basically, I think maybe you can correct me on this. I think he's won almost all, if not all of his world titles on the road. Those type of animals, when you give them confidence, that's like a chupacabra. That's like a like one of these predators that harm people. And now you've given him confidence that I can beat the crap out of you. So right. it's like that's a really tough battle because he's not going to undertrain. Yeah. I thought that fight was super interesting, too. I just and I think you're right. The idea that he was like, all right, I'm going to try to keep this fight exclusively at arm's length and make it a ch- like choose to make it a chess match. I'm not going to make this size a part of this fight at all. I'm going to try to keep my size out of the fight as much as possible, which I thought was fucking crazy. You know what I mean? Like it's it's basically the only advantage he had over Usyk. I, Usyk is better than him and, and then in basically every other category. So it's like, how are you not going to try to put your body on this man at least a little bit, you know? I mean, it's like, so like what if we're like you said, if the, if we're doing comparisons, it's like he has every uh, advantage of you against you in boxing besides God giving gifts and your physical size, like power, strength, reach, height. And you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that stuff. I'm going to actually allow you. We're going to do a boxing match. And you're this guy who's probably. I mean, he might be better than Evander Holyfield. Like, we, the story hasn't been written, but Usyk could go down as the greatest cruiserweight ever. He's doing something historic. He's It's basically, to me, it's him and Holyfield are the two best ever. And to try to fight a guy like this when you've seen prior opponents who have been physically rough with him really give him hard fights, kind of got mid-level guys... And to not look at those fights and go, huh, this guy's like a top 30 heavyweight and he 
gave him a, now the other exception is is Usyk the classic guy where if he fights a guy that doesn't kind of get him up does he just kind of eh, I know I can beat him like are those fights is there not much to take from those fights are those deceptive fights as a coach or should you have been sitting there and been like okay even if this is the worst version of him there are habits that he has there are patterns he goes back to that I can just maul forward and do that I just don't see the confidence in AJ anymore where he's willing to exchange or punch with people. Yeah, he's not. He, he definitely is. I definitely, from the second Ruiz fight, would describe him as gun shy. I just feel like he's holding his guns a little bit because he's afraid to leave himself open. But because he's holding his guns a little bit, he's more open. Like, he, there's less reasons to not let your hands go against him because – his style has like, I would say it's really pacified in a lot of ways. He's not like a killer. I never thought of him as like a killer killer, but I did think of his power as like above average for sure. You know what I mean? I, I thought of him as a guy, he catches you one queen and clips you, you know, you're going to go to sleep. And I still think he's that, but it's almost like he pulls them or he's not, he's not committed to him in the same way, you know? I mean, I think that you brought up a good point. It's like there was some switch where he used to fight to win and now he's fighting not to lose. And it's very evident as an observer when you can see someone who's like, they're not going to take those chances they once took because they don't want to go back to being on the ground, being a big old buff guy that the girls think are cute, who's a multimillionaire. And now you got the big fat Mexican guy who you thought you were going to spark out in a couple of rounds. He just dropped you. You feel you got spaghetti legs and you're just sitting there saying, I'm living my own nightmare. And with Usyk, it was kind of like in a weird way, deja vu. Like he doesn't seem to do well with people. He feels like he's vastly superior is an observation I'm saying while I'm listening. Like he looks at maybe he looked at Andy Ruiz's body, saw the late notice and he goes, yeah, I can handle this guy. This guy's going to be out of there. I think it's even deeper than that is like we're looking at someone who it's hard for him to get motivated for certain fights even if he knows Usyk ah he's this great guy but I'm bigger we both won 2012 Olympic medals but I was super heavyweight he was heavyweight there's like these weird little caveats that I could see a fighter creating and I think that's where the problem with him it's not just the fighting not to lose I think he runs the show and I think that with a fighter who makes this much money and is this powerful how do they not run the show? We see it all the time in the NBA, right? Does LeBron James not, is he not the head coach of any basketball team he's on? Is right. Tom Brady not the head coach of any football team he's on? It's just the nature. They make too much money and people want to be involved because if you're involved, you make more money yourself. So I think with Joshua, the problem is the voice is him telling other people how he wants to do it.